And Sir Chris Soy is here in his eponymous velodrome. Chris, I mean, I get emotional watching that. How do you feel? Well, you can't beat a good montage, can you? And <laughs> you can't. Uh, but that <laughs> music's a killer. <laughs> it's nice to have so many happy memories and what an amazing summer it's been. But it's just incredible to be here in Glasgow at the track and, and to see the, the crowd really getting into it and to be finally in the, the velodrome that's named after me. It's a, a huge honour. But indeed, it's like named after you, a massive honour. It's a bit weird. It is weird. I think what's weird is being here and not competing. You know, walking in the track centre this afternoon, seeing all the guys, seeing seeing my rivals, seeing all the people that I've competed against over the years and, and not being like her, not being out in the track myself. It's, it's, in some ways it's nice because you can relax and really enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the racing. But yeah, you do you do miss it. You have that kind of, you miss the adrenaline. And we saw Victoria Pendleton there in that montage. She is retired. You're absolutely not retired, are you? No, not yet. I mean, uh, ideally I'm going to be back here in uh, 18 months time for the Commonwealth Games. But, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking too far ahead, I'm just taking one step at a time. Um, you know, I'm 36 now, 37 in March, so it's just one step at a time. I'm off to Australia in December for a training camp. That's the first consistent block of training I've done since, since the Olympic Games. And we'll see what happens from there. But I'll be racing in small events this year, and then, or in the next six months, and then building up towards uh, 2014. Craig McLean, who used to, to, to race alongside, was here for the first couple of days, and he's never seen you take as much time off, you know, talking about a bit of, doing a bit of car racing. Um, is, there, is there any chance this might be the end, you might decide you don't want to do it? There's no, there's no chance that, that I don't want to do it. You know, my motivation is there and my desire is there. I think it's, it's literally down to whether I can do it or not, you know, whether I physically I'm able to do it, because it's not a matter of saying, yeah, I'll have that spot on the team. You have to earn it. And there's so many strong, fast, talented riders coming through that you, you've got to have one of those places. And I wouldn't want to try and just get the team to get the tracksuit and turn up and wave to the crowd. I want to go there to win. And if I, if I believe I can do that and I'm able to do that, then, I'll, then I will be there. And that's the hard thing, isn't it? It's, we've talked about it, the, the Olympic hangover. How do you pick yourself up after, after those things that we saw uh, in the montage there? That, that's not easy. It's not, but I think naturally you have to come off the peak. Otherwise, you know, by definition, it wouldn't be a peak. You have to come off that high, come down, let your body recover, mentally get over the, the effort that you put into the last four years. And then make your plan, make your, your strategy for the next four years. So I'm not going to be in Rio in four years' time, but you know most of the guys that were in in, uh, in London will be there. So they have that plan, and it's about pacing yourself over that four years. You know, yes, you want to be world champion every single year, but you'll forget all those lost gold medals if you win the Olympics in four years' time. Great to have you with us this afternoon. There's a busy afternoon ahead. Uh, here's what we've got coming up.